Hi there, I'm Renee and this is Movie Juice, coming to you in the best seat in the house and that's at your place. A lot of people have wondered what the Wachowski brothers have been up to since they made The Matrix. Well, I can tell you, it's a film called Speed Racer. It's about a guy who wants to win the Crucible. And they've made this into more of a family film than their previous works. Here's our US correspondent Sal Morgan with the news straight from the horse's mouth. And that's the cast of Speed Racer. Speed Racer, what are you thinking? That race was fixed. Someone's trying to crush everything in my life that matters to me. How can we fight this? The only way you'll ever stop these people is to bring them to justice. I heard the Wachowski brothers, the guys that had made The Matrix, we're gonna do Speed Racer, which is such an insane combination. It was just like, this is gonna be the coolest movie ever made. They're geniuses and they're visionaries and they, you can't even comprehend what's going on in their minds. Getting a chance to, to be in a, in a film where I was both working with filmmakers that I think are absolutely incredible and I was playing a role within a world that I thought that my kids were gonna just, you know, flip out over. It was pretty exciting. They run a very tight ship, but at the same time, they try to involve you in, in understanding what they're doing. They're very, very funny. They really have a good time. They know exactly what they want. Yeah. Being there amongst the actors and uh, with the Wachowski brothers, it was, it really did, it felt almost dreamlike. It really did. You may recognize this car. It's the famous Mach 5 that's driven by speed and played by Emil Hirsch in the film. The actor said this is one of the most challenging roles he's ever done, but also the most enjoyable. None of the cars in the film are real. No one drove a real car the entire film. It is all computer effects and it looks completely real. These cars look like they're real, like, like they're really driving. Great move, Speed. Careful the dog ball's coming up. You may want to back off. Not this time, Sparky. I think that the, the best people in the world for green screen would just be like people in an insane asylum. So they'd actually be like, I see it. <laughs> And that's the only way you can do it. You also did a lot of the stunts yourself, didn't you? I did all of it. I'm really proud of that. Uh, doing the fight sequence in the suit was incredibly difficult. I mean, I was uh, dying inside that thing. The visors were fogging over on the inside, and I was misjudging my moves and hitting stunt guys. <laughs> what did you think when you saw the final movie all done? Oh, my mind was so blown. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what they did. I still can't, you know? I, I can't wait for, for people to be able to see it. It's going to be an amazing movie for kids. I think kids are just going to love it and want to see it again and again. And then, of course, you've got all your hardcore Speed Racer fans from yes. the cartoon series yes. that will come along as well. And I think that I think that the brothers have done them justice. You can catch Speed Racer on the big screen now. There's a famous character called the Hulk, and he's not a jolly green giant like Shrek. Anyone can have a bad temper, but his is off the Richter. He was played to great acclaim on TV, then by Eric Banner, and now by the amazing Ed Norton. So who's the best Hulk? Check this out and tell us what you think. There are aspects of my personality that I can't control. Target is in the overpass. And when I lose control, it's very dangerous to be around me. It hasn't been all that long since we last saw Hulk on the big screen. Yeah. Why do you think they decided to bring him back? Well, I think this was Marvel, because um, they had, they brought their characters back, I think. I don't know how they, what, how these things work, but they wanted to do their own films. So not outsource them to a studio, and they actually wanted to make them themselves. So this is the two forays that they, the Iron Man and the, and the Hulk, their first two cracks at it. And the Hulk's one of their favorite characters. It's different. And, um, and I think they knew that, and they could really add something to the history of this classic that wasn't going to be redundant, or it's just completely fresh, I think. And I was always just so touched by he's just such a real man, and he really is a, a kind man. And he, you know, isn't like a superhero, and he doesn't step into a suit and have a choice that he's going to be the superhero. He has no control over this thing, and, and uh, I just always thought that was so interesting. So if you're taking another crack at him, I want in. I could probably arrange something like that. You ready? Yeah. Let's even the plan until. The Hulk tries to harness his power in this and use it for good. Yours character does the absolute opposite. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's, he's uh, Hulk's trying to get, I mean, Banner's trying to get rid of the Hulk and my guy wants it and wants it in spades, you know. Yeah, he's the next generation. There's only one thing that can fight that, it's in me. What was it about the role in the film that really appealed to you? I always loved Hulk from the time I was a kid. Um, it was uh, my number one fascination, comic book fascination. The comic books I had when I was a kid, I used to get every week. And then the, um, in fact, I spoke to Stan Lee. When I was a little kid, I called up, he was on a radio talk show in London, and I called up and I got him, uh, and I said, what, uh, what, what's your inspiration for the characters? And I was so nervous, I hung up. <laughs> yeah! Can you talk about the process that's involved when um, you're doing the scenes with the right. Hulk? There's a scene um, where I'm alone with him in a cave, and we shot that almost over the course of a, a week, I think. It's funny because I sit down with him, and in some of them I sort of had to lean my head on his shoulder and close my eyes, but I'm leaning into nothing and it's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's really silly, you're sort of touching nothing all the time. But, yeah. Was it, it looks good, the finished product is amazing. I can't believe it. Now, if you want to see what Ed Norton can do when he puts on the mega muscles in the jolly green paint, we have 20 double in-season passes to give away so you can go see The Incredible Hulk. Just go to moviejuice.com.au, enter your details, read my latest blog if you've got the time, then tell us in 25 words or less, if you turned green and busted out of all your clothes, what's the first thing you'd yell at the crowd and why? Sometimes I love films and sometimes I hate them, but this is one I can't wait to see and I hope I love it. The Happening stars Mark Wahlberg. It's an M. Night Shyamalan film and we haven't really seen a good one from him since the first one, and that was The Sixth Sense. But The Happening really looks like it's happening. A weird virus causes people to kill themselves in bizarre ways. Okay, yeah, it's a special effects film. So if you like that kind of thing, and I do, check this out. There appears to be an event happening. The first stage is loss of speech. Claire. Claire? The second stage is physical disorientation. The third stage is fatal. I was, you know, driving to the mix on Lady in the Water and I got this kind of flash of a movie idea as I was driving down the highway, which is something's wrong. All the cars are, have been abandoned and you see the trees and the grass on the sides of the roads and you don't know what's happened. I think that, that this is what thrillers play on, is that, is that you'll have these reactions to things and most of the time it's nothing. But in this case, it's something. <laughs> Were we supposed to stop here? What's going on? You can't just leave us here. Sir, we lost contact. With whom? Everyone. I was about halfway through it, and I just kept going, God, you know, the character that it keeps becoming, is, is Mark, it's the, uh, not the Mark that's on screen, the Mark Wahlberg that I knew as a friend, who I used to meet and see and joke with and laugh, and I'm like, he's the sweetest guy. Knight, for whatever reason, thinks I am this completely innocent person. Part of me is, but uh, I can't say that I am entirely innocent. I've had my uh, brushes with the law in the past and my, my uh, scrapes with trouble, but you know, he knew that I was raised right and that, that my intentions are good, but uh, I am not as innocent as he. I love working with Knight because he is a, um, he's just really fun and, and on, on set he's always joking around and it's just been such a fun experience. The attacks are spreading. Boston, Philadelphia. Maryland. It's all over the country. Authorities are now feeling that a terrorist group being responsible is becoming less and less likely. She says everyone's dead outside. Well, that's it for Movie Juice. It's been great being at your place. I'll see you next time.